Main rule of thumb on Azir, I'm happy when I'm just auto attacking away. You want to have the classic trading pattern of W on top of his head, 1 2 auto attacks, he's walking out, Q, 1 2 more auto attacks. I want to use the Q not for the sake of Q's damage, but for the sake of me being able to get 2 more auto attacks off. Okay, so that's good. That's what I want to see. But that didn't happen a lot. Um, if you understand your opposing champion, the more aggressive and the more oppressive you can play and the cockier you can play. Let's say you play against Senari. I try to go up in her face, I spawn a W soldier in her head and I'm literally saying, telling her, you try to land that ability, I know that you're going to shoot that charm and the moment the charm comes out, I'm going to sidestep it. It's always going to be a coin flip. But this is where mechanics and prediction learning comes from, right? If you don't f*** around, you're never going to find out. But now you know, even though you maybe lose the trade because she landed a charm, but now you know, okay, we were walking in this kind of direction and she, she shot her charm in this way. Now you kind of know, okay, this is what the guy initially thought. Let me try it next, next time, maybe the same way or a different way. And then you get like a very clear picture if you try a different type of sidestep, how this guy is actually shooting his skill shots. And if you manage by that time, the second time, to dodge their ability, you're completely in their head. Plus, every player plays differently, or like every player has a certain pattern. Starts at 8 seconds, goes down all the way to 4 seconds. This is how he's permanently trying to heal against you. The Vladimir players, they will take all of this um, all of this poke from you. So you basically want to get as many auto attacks off as you can, while stepping away the moment his bigger Q comes ready. And then you just step away, and then he has to kind of use the Q on the minions, simply to use the empowered Q for the extra healing. And then he used the Q, and now you go back in again, and you keep uh, s stabbing away at his head. And then you kind of count in your head, one, two, three, four, okay, that's the bonus queue's getting ready again, and then you want to uh, move back again. And then he's like, I want to queue, but okay, let me just queue the minions, and that's the, the whole dance the whole time. And then every time he uses Q, you want to look forward to keep auto attacking him. And then a body slam, like EQ, if you land E and Q on top of him, is like the entire rest of his HP bar. Yeah. That, that, that's kind of my goal, How what I'm looking for or my game plan to get a kill on any champion in the mid lane by level 3, 4, or 5 with Ignite. So, um, in the case of trading, then would... Do I would I want to take care of the casters first, then go for a trade? Problem is with, with Vladimir is he's just healing like a mother. <laughs> you kind of never want to let go of pressuring him. Mm -hmm. So I, I will lose early a ton of CS. But if you're jungle tracking nicely, then you then you can do something which is called controlled aggression. In this playstyle, I will sacrifice a few minions because it's just a bit of gold. I'm getting the XP anyway for the bigger goal of actually getting that kill. And then the wave is slow pushing, and if I get that kill actually under the tower, he's going to miss all of the, the XP and minions. The reason why losing minions is so big is not because of the money, it's because of the XP. If you fall behind in level towards your opposing laner, that's really bad. Because then you you, you find yourself in a situation, shit, I'm level 4 and he's going to hit level 6, and now the wave is pushing towards him as well. That's, that's where the starts happening because the game and the damage of every spell um, and the HP a champion gets per level and the, the armor they get per level is kind of balanced around all of this fact. That's why it's such a big deal when somebody's like one, two, three levels ahead of you. And now they also pair that with a ton of gold that they got by killing you and farming you out. But uh, this is how I actually did my first climb all the way to, to like 270 LP. Like I, I was this aggressive and I would always look for that. So if you know what a jungler is and you can ward accordingly, 
right? Most of the time, you know where, where the jungler started if you look at the map, right? Who comes back to line? Okay, they, they started here. Many junglers right now can do leashless, but what you can always do is, okay, I decide to work here. Now this is going to be my safe side. Right, or you can ward here. This is like probably one of the best warding spots because it gives you all of this information. Nobody can help with you. Outside of Kha'Zix, he can like jump here into the brush, but only good Kha'Zix players do that. So what is your opinion on ulting the wave just after killing them? Because I did that in the match and I want to know your... your I've, your do I've done it a few times. But more often than not, I'll, I'll probably end up using my ult to actually get the kill, to be honest. Especially especially in the early game. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe don't try to do it always, because you, you're going to reset, and then you come back, and then your ult is still going to be on like 40, 50, 60 second cooldown. I don't know, what is it, early 90? 100, 150 seconds. So let's say you kill him here, you go base, that's like 25 seconds. Still going to be like over a minute of cooldown. And there's a lot of shit that can happen in, in, a, in a minute. And I really value my ult for bot lane plays or skirmishes. I want these objectives because they help my team. I help my team to secure the objective because it makes us stronger and we are in a position to do it. But there's also my money that I want to be making, my, my income, right? And here I say, this is more than enough. We still see nobody. I have vision. This wave is about to crash. Let me pick that up now. They actually don't need me. And this is where you weight this thought against each other. Do they need me or can I go back to being selfish and make my money and go to work? Okay. So I took a look at my alt's damage and I said I could kill him. Uh-huh. Yep, yeah, fair enough. The problem is he's just going to double you and probably going to dodge your your old right? Right. So that's that's a bit of the iffy part uh, with this guy. But here it's basically just a Q again. So if you just swing the Q out, you will never have the availability and the flexibility of choosing when you want to actually go in for a kill to secure. It sounds small and it seems small because these abilities are like not flashy, but it's night and day if you just waste your Q here or if you have your Q right now ready for a nice EQ Ignite Auto Attack Drift here. Right? Because now you don't have your Q ready as Kha'Zix goes in for the drift. And you kind of just walk W, and you're not even in ignite range, nothing, right? I actually don't have Q up here. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying because you just shut it out. Yeah. Here, you just tell yourself, okay, I fucked up. <laughs> Simply for the reason because my jungle's around and he wants to gank. He doesn't know that my Q has five years cooldown, mm -hmm. right? All he sees, he's impatient. He wants, he wants to do his cams. This is all walking for him. Now he's waiting here for a <laughs> gang for a stupid Vladimir that's going to disappear and then flash or whatever. Um, so this guy is also impatient. You have to um, be considerate of this, of that as well, which is why I'm just happy Wing. If I put Q on cooldown just for a little bit of damage, I'm locking myself out of any playmaking potential for the next 10 seconds. 10 seconds so really is... really value my Q. Yes. Really value my E. Yes. Okay. That's going to be night and day for overall gameplay quality. Simply to be able to get a, get a gank off with your jungler, secure a kill, get away, etc. So, always happy just Wing away, because there's a lot of um, potential hidden be locked behind it. And you never want to finding yourself in a situation like this. Where you have to like use E and maybe get it close because your Q is low. This feels always bad and 90% of the time doesn't result in anything because you cannot control your actual final destination, right? Mm -hmm. um, so hold Q and E for most of the time since there is a lot of potential behind these abilities. I'm happy just using W. I want to place my soldier. I know it's only going to last for half, half as long. But I wanting to place it where he's kind of standing and where he has to go through to go for the last hit. So I'm placing my soldier kind of here-ish. So as he walks up, 
right? I can yeah. I can walk myself a bit out out of turret range while also giving him an auto attack. And now he has to now he's like under his tower, but it's unbelievably uncomfortable. It's a lot of pressure and many free auto attacks that we can get in, right? Mm. We're controlling the area quite intensely, especially against champions like this. But I like to do it with all of the champions. Ranged champions as well as melee champions. Like Syndra Ari, they have a lot of long range. But against this guy, it's very good. And then maybe we can even look for a quick EQ as he goes for a last hit. Quick EQ plus Ignite. Oftentimes, they don't react in time if you kind of hit them or catch them off guard while they go do a last hit. And that's how I often cheese out then a kill, level 3, 4 under the tower. So in my head, this guy is easy to oppress, but he's very difficult to finish off because of his stupid pull, right? So when I see this, I'm like, mmm, a jackpot, baby. The moment he's coming out here, I instantly drift on top of his head, ignite auto attack dead. So I should have punished him. Instantly, yeah. Like he, he's legally not allowed to stand under the tower. I mean, then Naomi comes, I know, so we first finish her off, and here's gonna come the Q situation again. You're gonna use the Q for her, wasting your Q even though she's perfectly in W range, and we can spawn in a second another W, you can even just do auto attacks because this guy's an assassin, he's going to melt her regardless. And now your Q is unfortunately still on cooldown. So the situation becomes more and more complex, you just... Dish out the old, the idea was okay. But do you see how much health he regenerated in this time? Mm -hmm. That is disgusting, right? So, just getting the kill here would have been the best situation. Of course, this is like chaos and blah blah, I'm not going to, going to give you too much for that. But, one auto attack here, and then I instantly drift on top of this guy's head to finish him off, and then I walk out. Uh -huh. That's what I would have done. Because we already have a few, oh my god, we have Nashos here already, yeah, yeah. This amount of HP, 30% HP, 30% HP is basically like uh, our killer window, especially with Ignite. Even if you're looking at the map, you don't have the information how much HP this guy has. I, I will say I don't look at the map enough. If you jungle track this guy properly and you see him somehow work somewhere, you will know that maybe his chickens are actually right now gone. And then I, I saw him like low HP and I'll go to the wolves. And kill him at the walls. It's not right now in this game, but I was just sometimes randomly because I paid for for a second attention. I'm like, hey, this guy is super low. He's probably going to his to his wolves now, and then this tower might be still up, and I'll just I'll just go here, check over, boom. Jungler doing his walls at 300 HP, I just get a kill, and they're spamming question mark. So League is really just a game of information, and the better you acquire and the more quality, um, the more quality the information you gather is, the higher quality your decision making is going to be. At the mercy of your mechanics, obviously, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. When you play PVE, is your time when you can practice using your camera a bit more, your map awareness. Because now you're literally not playing against anybody. You're not being threatened by nobody to get CC'd, killed, or whatever, right? You, you're not having a Z or an Ari or a Syndra in front of your face that she can, like, stun you from miles away. That's when you can, I guess, as a practice or a small quest for you to improve your future gameplay, is when you're like, okay, I'm right now farming, I don't have a laning opponent, what's going on on the map? Oh, I see heads colliding, what's happening? Okay. I really like this advice because when I was here pushing, I wasn't looking at the kindred, mm -hmm. and but then you you just now are and you see that she used alt, but I didn't know that. You didn't know that, yeah. And it's night and day. Good other other champions, very good examples are Blitzcrank, Nautilus, if they use their hook. Like I can stand in front of a Blitzcrank. If I know his hook is down. Mm -hmm. But it's suddenly a whole different situation if a Blitzcrank is walking at me and I don't know if he has his hook or not. But if I know he just used it two seconds ago, well now I know he's like over 10 seconds cooldown on his hook. On his hook, It's like night and day, right? You can basically cuddle with him because you don't care about Blitzcrank if his hook is down. 
or mm -hmm. same same for Morphite. He can basically stand next to you even though he's an uh, opposing champion. But if he doesn't have his ult, all he's doing is going to slow you. Like you, you don't care about that, right? It's like the the potential threat of a champion is only as um, as potent, I guess, as the abilities that they have available to them right now. If that makes any sense, right? Like, Morphite is scary because of his ult, but if you know he doesn't have his ult, all his other abilities are kind of... Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Same kind of for Kindred. That ult is a good example. Like, now you know, okay, she's going to have 100 HP, I can just ult attack her to death. Or, I know I can just use my ult to instantly one-shot her, um, because she doesn't have her ult, right? So that's super cool. That's the, the, the windows and the, the information high elo players will abuse to the T. And that will... I think that comes down to champion knowledge, which I really, really lack. Yeah, absolutely. If you have no clue that this guy has like over 20 seconds, like, oh, I didn't know it's 20, 30 seconds, but I know it's close to 20 seconds. That's what my, that, that was my initial assumption and feeling of his ability, that it's around the 20 second mark. That's a f metric <laughs> ton of time, right? Like, I can even wait 10 seconds after seeing him after using his W, I know I have like all the time in the world until his W becomes ready. So I'm going to play for that. Obviously, you can only punish this so far as to how <clears throat> how well you understand other champions, and that all and you all will get that automatically when you play a bit more, right? But it comes down by playing time. You can't have that naturally instantly, right? If if you didn't play a lot, if you only have 100, 200 ranked games a season, it's perfectly fine. Like you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to know all of the champions, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's your thought process here, right? We we saw her walking. That was unfortunately just a bit unfortunate. Do we have ignite here? We don't. So he's fighting me here. Well, I ult for damage. Yep, that's good. I like it. Yep, I would have done the same. Just ulting for damage straight up. Because he could have easily walk, walked out here, right? This even happens here, actually. Oh, that's so cool. Manipulating your opposing your opponent's mouse clicks. Pretty cool. So, because people have, like, natural clicks, right? So, you're fighting him, and then you walk backwards, he sees that. He doesn't have to be challenger to see that you're trying to maybe walk away here. He sees you are turning back, he knows I'm attacking like Machine Gun Kelly, I'm walking after this guy. And then he he kept on moving because you thought you're just gonna keep running away. Right? That's actually the only reason you land the ult. If you just stood still and he was a bit um he had better mechanics and more actions per minute, um he you actually wouldn't have uh, landed the ult here on this guy. But he was like, oh he wants to run and he's like cramp crampy hands and, and click in in your escape path. Pretty funny actually. Okay. <laughs> Thought, uh, thoughts to keep in mind while playing League or pay more attention to and then hone and improve on um, the next would be actually I think is there even more happening afterwards ah yes okay so we do get the kill here that's why I wrote it down what's your thought process here I kinda after this type of situation I'm super low I don't have inter uh, information I don't like being in the jungle like I either want to dip or want to keep pushing because this tower is very low HP mm -hmm. You go to the Drake? I, yeah? Yeah, I, I was passing towards Drake, but if I have to be honest, I wasn't thinking of anything at that time. Yeah, so... We are a backlane carry, and I kind of... I just don't want to die, right? If people mm -hmm. somehow find a way to collapse onto us, we are usually... <laughs> because if they can surprise me... Well, now I'm... <laughs> because I wasn't able to plan ahead for that type of situation. Tristana exists. If she jumps on my head, I'm definitely KFC. So I want to find ways, and whatever I'm going to going to do, is that she cannot bump into me. Mm -hmm. That's what that's like the mental map that I would have in general. I know okay, it's Tristana botlane. If she ever finds me, 50% HP, I'm dead. Especially with that old. I can't pee myself off her. She has hello blades. She's bursting me down very quickly. It's just the nature of the champion, right? So. She's, she's basically an assassin, right? You, you don't want an assassin find you in the jungle close by when you have 50% HP, right? Mm -hmm. I get the kill here. This guy uh, just pants. He's running for his life. So I, I'm kind of like, okay, let me get more money. Let me be efficient. I want to keep pushing my money. Go to kill. Let's get even more XP, even more money. Let me also grab this tower. 
I look down, okay, there's three people on the drag, they don't need me. I just killed one guy, another guy is also out of the equation, my team should be fine, and they are all on the objective, they don't even need me here. Quick look, two seconds, one second, decision is made, keep farming, keep pushing. I'm also way more safer in the center of the lane than just walking out here to my team, because I don't know what's going on here, right? Mm -hmm. but, but here I'm in the center of the lane, they, somebody has to first pop out from here, here, and here. And I have so many, I have like 25 million directions I can always escape from, uh, towards. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's just efficiency again. Uh, next up would be 1813, and we have two more points, and then we're basically done. So I thought, okay, I should press the Thresh uh, Lantern. Yeah, but it's not the world, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. You want to be very aware how strong you are at the moment. So when you're doing remotely even in the game, and you sit on these... Like, every time you're basically not inting, and you have basically these components, boots, large rods, and Nash's tooth, I know with the biggest confidence, without even looking at my damage, I'm going to f*** up whoever carries in front of my face. That's the confidence that uh, I want you to have, basically blindfoldedly, right? And you also see how much damage is coming out here. Simply to approach certain situations when you look, oh, okay, I have Nashus now, now I'm Omega, I'm even doing good, I'm not even behind. Like, Azir is one of the strongest champions right now in the mid lane. He's a walking massive broken stat stick at the moment. So as long as you're not being CC'd, you're basically bulldozing everybody. As long as they're like some type of carry champion. But, yeah, I was about to say, um, I really feel the same way when whenever I get Nashers. And mm -hmm. then I get back to lane, I feel it right away. It's crazy strong, right? I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. It's really good. Uh, one thing simply for a min-maxing here, I think... Are you going to use your Q here or not? So we kill this guy, blah, 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 we get some money. Now I'm kind of in a blood rush. I'm like, okay, let's have fun. This guy's even going in. <clears throat> I'm two levels ahead of him. I have three people, we are fine. And again, you use the Q here, just for a little bit of extra damage. I want you to also be more aware of how much area you're actually covering with, with the W soldiers. So uh, it's, this, this comes in here again. We're going to spawn one soldier here. Like, this is so unnecessary. Because also his trajectory was towards me, right? It's not like he, he was kind of running away. Now he's going to be running away. And now I really would love to have my Q ready, because now I can E, Q over this wall, and kill him. And now I look like an actual smurf. Mm -hmm. But instead, we just get to these two. Instead of even more. Min-maxing and pushing the limits. And you simply will be able to do that. What you can also do here, though, is because Q is now slowly on a lower cooldown, recognize that he's now running away and recognize that your Q is in three seconds ready. I just walk all this way over here, and then boom, ready, and I don't know, I guess we're standing kind of here somewhere, and then W, Q, and finish him off. Right? I guess the best way to explain it is I don't have the confidence to hold my Q like you, like mm -hmm. you explained. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like I need to... Okay, enemy right in front of me, get on that right away. Mm. So, to me, using Q for damage simply feels bad. Uh -huh. Right? So, especially in situations like these, I'm simply going to refrain from using my Q, because I want to have my Q in case my opponent is going to escape. So, um, the kind of reasoning behind why I use Q the way I do is... 100% muscle memory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understandable, yeah. But I, I can see now, yeah, um, walking up to W them, or just simply holding it for later on, it's it's be it's better. Yeah. It's really night and day. It's really just a basic, basically the difference of Headless Chicken or Emperor. Either you're always going to be ready for whatever's going to happen, because all you really need to do is just use your W and auto attack, like any ADC champion in existence. That's our champ by design. And then, in case whatever happens, 
when it's time to make a decision, okay, is my opponent going to dip? Or is somebody actually coming in to help him and now I'm actually the one who's going to get... Well, I can dip because my Q and my E are ready. And that's going to be night and day. As simple as it sounds, but that's going to alleviate your gameplay a lot. And then you're going to push with this idea how you're going to use Q and E. You want to push your mechanics, your min-maxing, and then you can kind of start smurfing on your opponents. And, and this game was perfectly fine, but you have done nothing to really get fat. It just felt like we were doing like random 1v1s everywhere. Yeah, you, you, your team was just kind of winning for some reason. You guys were just kind of winning and you were getting apparently most of the kills. And then you just kept stat-checking people and bulldozing the opponents, right? Mm -hmm. But you haven't done anything that was like deserving of actually getting this status. Everybody just faced each other and used their abilities. And then it's like you, you, you run a simulation. And then based on how, who was standing where, it kind of worked in the favor of you guys. Right. And I think Azir's strength actually comes into full display here. How, how strong he really is, how massive of a stat stick he is. say you're hitting here somebody walks through here you're not going to see them right so this path i care about these paths this path basically becomes obsolete when i place a ward here because well people have to pass this brush regardless so some place around this corner is basically where i like to have it depending on how i feel makes sense right <laughs> and um that would be it i guess don't have any more points if you got any more questions feel free to ask i'm going to stop the recording at this point it's an hour